Okay, so hello, this is Dr. Jeans, and in my previous video, I showed how to uh, basically build up the circuit. And I was using uh, this is a high power audio oscillator, and I was using these 5 ohm loads to drive uh, or to as the output of this oscillator. And I show in another video how to wind this uh, for wire one-to-one -one transformer and so let's just do a quick test I have this hooked up to my 300 watt uh, pyramid speakers tweeters and I tested them in a different video up to 25 kilohertz and uh, basically I I'm, I'm, took the two loads there's two outputs of this and I ran one one way to the transformer and one the other way through so this is what this wiring is I have a bunch of clip leads I know the whole thing looks like a giant mess, but um, let's just test it out. I just wanted to test out to make sure this thing's going to oscillate, okay? Okay. And... Oh, it sounds like it's oscillating, all right. I'm to hook it up to a scope. It's not going down as low a frequency as I thought it would. The impedance is definitely different. So let's... Uh, let me turn the break something. Okay. So I'm going to have to hook that up to an O-scope and see what's going on. But it looks like the thing is oscillating and at pretty high power. I'm not. I'm only running at 12 volts. But um, eventually I'm going to step up the power to, uh, you know, the power goes as uh, V squared over R. And so as we step up the voltage, the power is going to go up quadratically. So anyway, well, I'm going to test it at low power so I don't burn something out. Very cool, huh? Maybe uh, soon we'll have this device done and we'll be able to do some cool research with it. Okay. Okay, so here we have our, let's have our guy up to the power. And it's oscillating at a very very high frequency. Okay. And um, I hooked it up to my Rigo scope. And I don't know why. It's probably because um, the uh, charging of the capacitor is DC, so it has a different impedance through this uh, inductive transformer than um, um, the speaker would have through the transform impedance. The speaker is going to, you know, at that frequency, it's probably going to have close to uh, six ohms, where the uh, at DC frequency, the uh, impedance is going to be a lot lower. So that changes the calculations of our uh, oscillation time or oscillation period. And so uh, we may have to go back through and uh, readjust parameters to. Um, probably the best thing to do would be to add more capacitance because then I get more a better tuning range if I add capacitors but I'm going to have to work on my spice model a little bit and I'm going to figure out what the effective resistance would, would be to have it oscillate at this frequency and then see if I can estimate how much capacitance I'll need okay I think we're making progress though okay so I tuned our device down to the lowest frequency. Okay. And uh, <coughs> capture that on the scope. <coughs> and it looks like it is about 9.7 kilohertz. Okay. So it's not too bad. Maybe I will. Uh, hmm think about this. I, I'm going to do some experiments with this and see see if this is good enough or not. Okay, okay let's take a look at the uh, transistors here. So um, we actually have to make connection to the case of this guy and um, I think the best way to do that is to use a lug. Okay, so we have a lug here and uh, I think I stripped some wires back. Okay. We can put the wire into the lug, and I don't know where my crimping tools are actually. Let's see, this is, see the, let's see if we can get it someplace where there's not total chaos. 
Okay, there's the wire stripped back, and here's our lug. Okay, and we'll put the wire into the lug. And uh, I guess if you can't find your crimping tools, then a pair of pliers seems to do the job. Uh, sometimes. Maybe if you squeeze it at the very top. Okay, there we go. Okay. And so now we have this guy crimped on there. And um, I'm going to, I think, try to mount one of these transistors onto our heat sink here. And I have some bolts. So the bolts will go through the transistor and um, hold that on. I'll put one of the lugs through one of the bolts. These are the through holes for the pins. And uh, let's take one of these and mount it with my nifty ZIF connector and then we'll take a look at that. Okay. Okay, okay, so here's our transistor, and I think I'll release it from the ZIF connector like so. And uh, I'll pull it out of the socket. I'm going to have to remove this clip lead here also. Okay, so here's our transistor, and it's in this orientation like so. And we'll put it on the heat sink. And maybe I'll. Well, let's see. Where. Did my lug go? Oh, here's my lug. So I have my lug. I have some screws here. See if these will fit. Okay. So I'll put the screw through the lug. Put it into the transistor. And uh, I'll screw that guy on. Looks like these screws are going to be long enough. Okay. Excellent. Hopefully that doesn't interfere with my nifty ZIF connector. If so, okay. I'll put the other screw in there like that. And uh, I don't want the pins really touching the aluminum per se. I want them to be more in the middle. I'll have to tighten these up a little bit. Okay. There we go. There's our pins. And uh, make sure this fits back onto the ZIF connector like so. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? There, it's locked into place. And then uh, we'll just hook this back up to our clip lead. And I'll retest our circuit and make sure that it is uh, still operational because we let's see can I okay here it is okay here's our two leads and we'll hook it up to the battery it's always good to make sure that uh, your circuit you didn't break your circuit when you uh, And you don't want to leave the lithium batteries on because there's no protection for them and I already ruined one if you let them discharge all the way it will destroy the battery so uh, good uh, word of caution there okay let me uh, crimp this other one up and uh, we will get the heat sinks on there and maybe we'll solder some more things in place and get the circuit more set I still want to shift the frequency down so I'm still working on that and then I'll make a case for it, maybe. Should be cool. Okay. okay, here we go. We got our two heat sinks in place with our lugs on there. And uh, let's just test out our circuit to make sure it's still working. start soldering some of these wires together but I still need to replace these capacitors need to find some better capacitors maybe 
and uh, maybe solder some wires, tape up some of these loose things, and we'll have to design a case for this. Maybe we'll test it at high power, see how much power we can uh, put into this thing before we blow it out. It says 300 watts, so I'll try to get it up close to 300 watts. Should be pretty cool, huh? Okay, did I mention sometimes it helps when you're crimping uh, lugs to also solder them because if you don't get the crimp good, they can come out a crimp and a solder. Uh, makes it a lot harder for it to come out, makes better conduction, right? So, there we go. Okay, soldered and crimped. Okay, so this lead actually just came off. I pulled it out when I was going to try to solder this thing up. So, um, that's a good tip. Solder your lugs as well as crimp them. Okay. Okay, so I was going through my capacitor stash, and I think I found a one microfarad capacitor, which um, I think, according to my estimations of my P-Spice that I was doing, um, I don't have it up right now. Anyway, uh, this might bring the frequency down into the range where uh, I want it to be. So maybe I'll try tacking these capacitors on and um, see if see what the frequency is, and then we'll shoot, aim and shoot, and see where we hit. Right, shooting from the hip now. Okay. Okay, so I got my uh, one microfarad capacitor here, and uh, I think I'll just try to um, solder that guy on there, like so, and we'll test out the new frequency, see if uh, this shifts the frequency down enough, because remember the other one was about a fifth of a microfarad, and it was going up to... 200 kilohertz, which would almost be good enough to drive a Tesla coil, and maybe I'll look into that possibility. Okay, now that I got these uh, the circuit design down. Okay, let me get the other capacitor on there, and we'll test this guy out. Okay, okay so we got our new capacitor on there. And uh, let's just twiddle with this. I think it's overkill. It's not, definitely not hmm, the right frequency range. Now let me turn this thing off. Okay. Okay, so I found another capacitor. This one's about 479 nanofarads. So maybe we'll try this one, see what kind of frequency range this has.